Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com. And today we've got another question and answer video. This one is about overvolting an electric bicycle motor. Now today's question comes from 101 who asks uh, for more specifics about basically how do you overvolt an e-bike motor. So I believe this is going to be a common topic so I want to go over some different issues here. Um, the first thing to know about overvolting an electric bicycle motor is that uh, there's really no set voltage for a motor. You know there's some motors that are marketed as uh, meant for use for a certain voltage like a 36 volt motor or a 48 volt motor. There's some motors that are marketed as being multi-voltage, like you, know, you can use it for anything from 24 to 48 volts. Now this is all sort of just marketing, uh, I don't know, mumbo jumbo. There's, there's no such thing as a one voltage motor. Any motor can basically run on any voltage. The voltage change is just going to have an effect on the speed that the motor turns. So for example, uh, I've got these motors in my bike. These are both Q100 motors that were originally marketed as 36 volt motors. Uh, here's another example. And these are, you know, nice little cute uh, uh, geared hub motors. And because these are marketed at 36 volts, I can check the RPM that they're meant to spin at. So uh, this one, it says that it's meant to spin at 201 RPM at 36 volts. These are meant to spin at, uh, I believe, 260 RPM at 36 volts, so a little faster. But what I did was I decided to overvolt them. So instead of running them at the 36 volts that they were originally marketed as, uh, as being meant for, I ran them at 52 volts. And what that does is it just increases the speed. And I can check how much that increases the speed just by doing the proportion. So if we take, uh, let's see here, get my calculator out. So if we take 52 volts and divide it by 36 volts, we get 1.44. So it's about a 44% boost in voltage, which will be equivalent to about a 44% boost in speed. In reality, it'll be a little bit less than that, um, just because there are some inefficiencies as you go faster, but you should get about a 40% boost in speed. Now you can also calculate the final speed of your e-bike, or at least of the hub motor on your e-bike, once you know the RPM of the motor and what voltage you're gonna run it at. So again, for example, if we look at my bike, these motors were originally 36 volt, 260 RPM motors. Now I've got this equation that to be honest, I, I thought I developed it, but now I'm wondering if a friend of mine in college that I worked with developed it. Uh, Thorne, if I stole credit from you for this, I'm sorry. But this is the equation that I always use to calculate the speed of an e-bike. Um, first, I take the RPM of the motor, which in our case is going to be 260. Then I multiply it by the uh, diameter of the bicycle wheel in inches, which I have 26 inch wheels. And then I multiply it by 0 .003 uh, to get the speed in miles per hour. So that gives me 20.28, uh, about 20 miles per hour. You could also, instead of multiplying it by uh, 0.003, you can multiply it by 0.0048, and that should get you the speed in kilometers per hour, which would give me 32. Now, because I'm overvolting this, I want to do the uh, ratio of the voltages. So I would take my 52, and I would uh, multiply this by 52, and then divide it by 36. So that gives me my 46.8 kilometers per hour, or uh, 29.2 miles per hour, which is uh, about what this bike can get. So that's the equation that I use, um, and you can find it in my book as well, uh, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, and that shows you how to basically calculate the speed of your, uh, of your hub motor, especially if you're going to be over-volting it, so you can play with different voltages and see how that's going to affect your e-bike. Now the tricky thing when you're over-volting a motor is to know how high can you go. Now, theoretically, like I said, the more voltage you give, just the faster the motor is going to spin. The problem is you're also going to create more heat, especially at higher loads. When you go faster, you're going to be drawing uh, full power, you know, whatever the power limit of your controller is, more often. And what that means is you're just going to have a lot more heat in the motor. So it really depends. You know, there's, there's no one rule to say this is how much higher voltage you can go than your motor is rated for. It really depends on a lot of issues like the rider weight, um, if you're you know, a heavier or a lighter rider, if you're going to be driving up a lot of hills, uh, hills are going to put a lot more load on the motor. Uh, the weight of the bike as well, the aerodynamics, all these things that basically affect how much load is going to be on the motor, which means how many amps are flowing through the motor. So in my case, what I did was, because I overvolted it a, a pretty good amount, you know, 44%, um, one thing that I did to help with reducing the heat is I lowered the current. Um, both of my controllers, like you saw in my last video here, both of my controllers uh, have a limit of 18 amps, but I pull them back to about 11 amps each, so the whole system gets about 22 amps. 
What that means is that these motors, even though they are originally meant for 36 volts, uh, they were meant to run somewhere around you know, 15, 18 amps each, but I've lowered the amps, so I get about the same amount of watts going through each motor, meaning the same amount of power and a similar amount of heat generation. The other thing is because I have two motors, each one is helping the other one out. Uh, I can still do this with one motor, you know. Um, these little motors, I feel comfortable running these uh, 36 volt motors up to about 48 or 52 volts, even with just one, but having two motors definitely helps reduce the load. So when it comes to overvolting the motor specifically, it's really about how much load can the motor take, and that's a little bit of trial and error. You know, going up 30, 40, 50% is usually not a problem, but if you're a heavier rider or you're doing lots of hills, you want to monitor your motor, you know, just feel it with the back of your hand, make sure it's not getting too hot, um, because if it's getting really hot, that's a sign that you might have gone a little too high with the, uh, with the voltage, just because it's probably making you run at a faster speed, uh, which is going to be pulling more current. Now the next issue for overvolting is not just the motor, but your controllers. So, you know, like we said, the motor can run at really lots of different voltages, but controllers, they're a little more sensitive. And that's usually because of the capacitors that are inside of the controllers. So in my case, I have uh, multi-voltage 36 and 48 volt controllers in my bike. Uh, I checked inside and the capacitors can go up to 63 volts, which means uh, I should be fine running my 52 volts on it, which actually charges up to 58.8 volts. And so far, you know, it's been working great for the last couple years. But you really need to check your controller to make sure it can handle the higher voltage. Um, a lot of 36 volt controllers have 50 volt capacitors in them, which means when you try to bump those up to 48 volts, you can end up burning out the, uh, the controller. So you really need to make sure that you know what's in your controller or be prepared to sacrifice your controller by potentially burning it out. Um, sometimes when you're you know, real close to the limit, you can get by, but um, again, if you're gonna be doing lots of hills or if you're uh, you know, a heavy rider and you're putting a lot of load on the controller, then that's uh, you know, just a better chance that if you're close to the, to the voltage limit that you might burn it out. So those are the two things you really need to look for when you're um, overvolting your e-bike. Uh, first, know that your speed is going to increase by whatever percentage you increase the voltage. And then second, make sure that your controller can handle whatever that voltage is. Um, you know, worst case scenario, you can always swap out your controller to a higher voltage controller. But overvolting is a really neat idea to be able to um, get you know, a little more speed, a little more power out of an e-bike. You just got to be careful and make sure you don't get carried away with it. All right, thanks for the question 101. Um, you know, like all my question and answer videos, uh, you guys put your questions in the comments below. If I choose to make a video about your question, then I will send you a free copy of either my first book, The uh, Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my second book, uh, DIY Lithium Batteries. So send me a private message here on YouTube 101 and uh, give me your address and let me know which book you'd like and I'll get that sent out to you. For everyone else, thanks for watching.